Hello everyone and welcome to today's episode of the Osasu Show. IPOB, referendum, agitations, military operations. Today we talk to the man at the center of it all. Don't go anywhere and we'll be right back on the Osasu Show. Your Excellency, Executive Governor of Abia State, Dr. Okize Victor Ekbazu, welcome to today's program. Thank you very much. You've been governor a little over two years now. What are some of the biggest challenges you've had to overcome? Well, I, first of all, um, it was battling with uh, perception, you know, and then um, trying to um, lead your people in such a way that it can be all engaging. Um, everybody can be part of what you are doing going forward. You know, and um, uh, I, what I've, my experience is that as you keep trying, as you keep doing that, um, and of course there are so many strategies to devise. We do um, public engagement. I. I go on radio at least once every three months to do a funding program in the major cities of uh, Abia State, Aba, Omaha, and all that. And then uh, my, my, my biggest number one promise was that I'll create a platform where everybody can be part of what we're doing going forward. So I, I needed to also open up a little bit, you know, and engage, you know. So as we make effort to do that, you, you notice that um, you know, people deploy propaganda machines using the social media, using newspaper, all kinds of things. You know, ranging from things that are completely, completely untrue. Mm -hmm. People can, you know, set up things and say, you, you, you were just arrested yesterday <laughs> and all of that, you know, you know. And then a lot of people tend to believe all that, mm -hmm. you know, because, uh, you know, doomsday prophets seem to gain, you know, more currency than uh, uh, people who, you know, said so, but, um, you know, and all that, I engage pensioners, I engage traditional rulers, I engage uh, the, the civil service, the civil society. Um, as I speak, uh, I'm, I, I'm going to engage uh, students. We're going to sit down in an informal way and talk about talk where we're going and all the that. The chieftain of the All Progressive Congress in your state, uh, begs to differ. He thinks one of the major challenges of your... He his name is what? A chieftain of your, uh, the All Progressive Congress, Destiny Okwana. Destiny. Yes, mm -hmm. they call him Swaz Destiny. Mm -hmm. So he stated, and he describes your government, I quote, his government seems overwhelmed by the problems left behind by his predecessors in office. The baggage is huge. The baggage of his godfather and all the mess he left behind. Cleaning up the mess will take a while. Backlog of unpaid salaries, pension arrears, infrastructural deficit, violent crimes, rural poverty, the list is endless. So what was the state of Abia when you came into office? This, the picture that the gentleman painted is the picture of Nigeria. And I, I was mindful of this situation before I elected to Vi. You know, so um, Abia, like every other state, had problems, you know. And uh, I also do not think that the proper thing for me to do is to begin to dwell on what happened during uh, Ojizo Kalo's regime or Governor T. Ojiz's regime. My concern should be, what can I do? Because I, I should have done an analysis. It will be foolhardy on my part to spend the last 
two years, talking about what could what my predecessor did not do. But some of the actions of your predecessors have also led your current administration into trouble. So, for example, on August 7th, uh, 2017, the Federal High Court sitting in Abuja mm -hmm. froze the accounts of Abia State, the Paris London Club refund accounts of Abia State, Delta State, and Cross River States mm -hmm. due to allegation of misappropriation of funds and giving family members, friends, and cronies. Uh, contracts to become consultants mm -hmm. uh, between the state and the federal government. We did our investigation and we realized that the contract was given out in 2014 mm -hmm. in the administration of your predecessor. Mm -hmm. So do you, how do you plan to rectify that disconnect? At any point in time you take over governance and reins of government, you must meet something that has been left by your predecessor. And um, this is not to say that everything that was done in the past was properly done. And it is not also to say that everything that I'm going to leave, even when I leave office, would be adjudged to be uh, properly done. But I'm so saying was this that contract properly uh, executed? Was it do, go, did it go through the proper channels? My concern wasn't even to look at uh, the co appropriateness of the contract order. Why was it's that? In, it's in Is it court. because he was your alleged godfather? No, there's no godfather. That doesn't mean Abia State. I do my job. There's one governor. And uh, luckily, I have a predecessor. Everybody has a predecessor. And my predecessor knows where to draw the line. My concern is, um, why would somebody even clamp on somebody's account without a judgment? Because there was that allegation. Mm -hmm. And then the fallout of his clamp down on somebody's. So what was the reason? I, I, as at that time, the state government hadn't been had. That's the issue. So I, I cannot abandon that critical issue and begin to look at, you know, my thing is, ah, what's happening to Abia, my state? A state that God has put under my charge. What should I do under the circumstance? You can imagine how infantile it would look for me to come out and say, oh, yes, there's no money in Abia now because uh, something happened in the past and all that. No, 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 that's not the way to go. Um, um, my record of performance, just like any other person's record of performance, is in public domain and history and posterity. We judge and rate each and every one of us uh, going forward. I, I wouldn't like to appoint myself a judge. Of but sticking with the issue of the Paris uh, Club refund, Abia State in the first tranche received... About 11, the first tranche? The first tranche. The second tranche was 5.7. Okay, the first one was 10.6, and yeah, the second one was about like 5.7. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, you're still owing pension. Mm -hmm. Okay, what have you done with the fund so far? Well, I want to start by thanking the ICPC for adjudging Abia State as... Uh, one of the cleanest states in terms of management of uh, both the bailout and Paris Club funds. That's despite the Federal High Court order. Which Federal High Court order? The one that, that clamped froze, down? Exactly, that froze their accounts. No, 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 no. The Federal High Court order thing is not, can be a subject of this discussion because that would be prejudice. <laughs> <laughs> so are you saying that the judge, what, what, what exactly are you saying about that judgment? What I'm saying is that the judge, I'm, I'm bothered about how a judge can arrive at a judgment without hearing, I mean, clamping down on somebody's accounts mm -hmm. and all that. Because there was a complaint that somebody says he wanted a certain amount of money to be paid to him as consultants. And we are looking at all the entire gamut of the consultancy in Broglio, uh, quote unquote, around the Paris Club thing. Mm -hmm. This is uh, one new income or new economy for Nigerians now, Paris Club thing. And uh, so, uh, for me, I think it, it needs to be properly looked at. I, I, I cannot, I wouldn't want to be quoted about uh, the exactitude of the figures to the last uh, uh, digit, but we got 10 point something billion, or about 11 billion, first party club, and we, we, we were, we, hold, we held a discussion with the federal government and they said, well, could you please uh, dedicate 50% of that to work and salary and all that. And then um, in Abia State, uh, we, 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 we set up a committee. We called the Nigerian Labor Congress, the TUC, the Union of uh, Pensioners, 
and everybody and said, we got some money. I went on air in the three senatorial districts. I went on air and said, gentlemen, ah, some money has come. This is the amount and we're supposed to take this for salary. In fact, um, in my state at that time, uh, people uh, were calling me indocid because I said this money is indocid. Mm -hmm. Don't place any other expectation on this money apart from the fact that we're going to do what is. So 100% of the Paris, re Paris Club that is second was used to pay second second tranche. Tranche. was used to pay salaries. Second tranche I gave 100%. And points. the first one? I gave 50% mm -hmm. plus 600 million. And what happened to the remaining 50%? Oh, of course, less than 50 now. Mm -hmm. we, it went into infrastructure. Infrastructure, okay. Can you talk to us more about some of those infrastructure projects and how you've been able to uh, boost your internally generated revenue? Oh, yes. Uh, starting from infrastructure, we, um, we, 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 we crafted for ourselves a clear plan about how we wanted to develop Abia. And this plan was predicated on a deep study about the things we could do in Abia that other people cannot do properly or cannot do better than us Abia, you know. So we wanted to do something about our trade and commerce, our industrialization, small scale manufacturing, our tailoring, shooting, our agriculture and all that, our oil and gas. We deliberately put oil and gas number five because we knew that the oil economy was going to be replaced by something else maybe in the next 10 years. You know. So in doing that, he said, well, you, you need enablers to drive this. And road was key. The, we wouldn't believe that in Abia State, since the inception, those who claim that they have done all this and that for Abia, no single flyover in Abia, hmm. except the one we are doing now. So we noticed that it would take you four hours to move from Osisioma Junction into the city centre in Abia. So we needed to do an interchange. So that those who were heading to Port Harcourt can go. Of course, before you go beyond those system, you pass two other major markets along your way to Port Harcourt. So we needed to create this access. And people are very, very excited that somebody can even take up that kind of thing a project. In, a, in, a, in, a, in an economy that is undergoing recession. Let's talk briefly about your fifth pillar of development, which is oil and gas. The international community has stated that oil will be absolute in the next 10, 20 years, which means literally in the next five years. So we should look at ways of diversifying our revenue. Uh, how important is oil and gas in uh, Abia State? And what are some ways that you're looking at to diversify when oil becomes irrelevant to the international market? This is the way I am thinking. If you say my crude oil in Abia will be useless in 10 years, yes? But you buy my aerosol, you buy my benzene, you buy my chlorine, all of them are derivatives of uh, uh, whatever. You buy my, my petroleum metal, which, which is a solvent. Is the federal government thinking in line with your suggestions? I, I, well, I lead the subnational government. <laughs> I have to think also. Your Excellency, on that note, let's take a short break and when we return, more with the executive governor of Abia State. Don't go anywhere. There is a reason Africa is called the new frontier. What was once potential is now an opportunity ready to be seized. Once revered for our resources, today's wealth lies in our people. People who build the cities that shape the future. People who know an idea in one place means business in another. A generation for whom technology means there are no borders, no boundaries. We are the new lions in a brave new world, kings of the urban jungle. And there's a bank that puts the world in our pocket and the future in our hands. UBA, Africa's global bank. Welcome back to the Osasu Show. Still with me is the executive governor of Abia State, Dr. Okeze Victor Ikbazu. Thank you so much for sitting tight. Welcome. Recently, the Southeast Governors Forum prescribed the activities of the ind indigenous people of Biafra. Uh, the military followed suit and labeled them terrorist. Do you agree with this classification? Well, 
I, I first of all, I would like you to put uh, the action of the Southeast governors within context. Um, sometime uh, within this month of September uh, 2017, the military came up with uh, uh, a contraption they called uh, Operation Python Dance or Egweke in the Southeast. You know, in, in the course of that, they encountered. Uh, uh, you know, those who, youths who believed in uh, IPOB. And then um, one thing led to the other. Some soldiers were wounded, you know, people, uh, ammo tanks were pelted and all the kind, of, you know. And then um, uh, it became expedient for the governors of the Southeast to uh, look at their mandates. Uh, my mandate, the, as a governor, is to secure life and property. Life and property of not only Abians, but every person that is doing business within the geographical space called Abian States. So I should protect even people who were, uh, as at that time, agitating for uh, an independent state, independent country called Biafra. It was part of my responsibility to protect them. It was also part of my responsibility to protect ordinary Abians who did not believe in that agitation at that time. But most importantly, I, I come from the, a part of this country when, where uh, the, 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 the life and safety of your visitor and those who are within your gates is perhaps more important than uh, your own life. So what you're saying is that this led you to prescribe the activities of IPOB. Oh, no, no, but, the, but the yeah. Senate president mm -hmm. did say, Senator Bukola Saraki, in a statement issued on the 18th of September, that the Southeast Governor's Forum has no power to proscribe the activities of IPOB. The senior president is not from Abia State. He was a governor in Kwara. And he was never confronted with the kind of circumstance I was confronted with. But he's saying constitutionally. No, no, no. He, 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 you see, security is something that will lead you into decisions that... Uh, because if you want to wait for what you think is constitutionally right or wrong, of course it is not even up to him to say. Because he's not the chief CJA of this country. He's, he's a legislator. And the, 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 the judiciary is there. That is his opinion. We have our opinion. It is the judiciary that will determine between the two of us who is right or wrong. But my duty and my responsibility as at that day was to make sure that I avert bloodshed of monumental proportions. So do you agree with the military that IPOB is a terrorist group? The military? Yes. Well, I do not even know whether it is the right of the military to say that IPOB is uh, a terrorist group. But if so you ask me, if you you ask me as a person, mm -hmm. if you ask me as a person, well, I, 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 you know, people make all kinds of agitations across Nigeria. For me, for me as governor, I supported proscription as at that day because we did not want you to begin to gather in one location or the other under the aegis of IPOB so that they could regroup to probably attack, you know, one group of people. So we needed to hold on that. But then, going forward to say this group is a terrorist group, has international consequences, has far-reaching whatever. The information that is available to the federal government is not available to me. And if, if that is what they have said, it is up to them to defend it. But for me as a person, sitting in my small corner, I can speak like any other Nigerian. Well, we think it is a hasty decision, that shouldn't have been, that's all right. But are we sitting and viewing it all from the prism of the federal government? It's a matter for another day. But the small corner that you claim to be sitting at is the hotbed of violence mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. So why isn't the federal government sharing information with you? Well, that is also a question which I, I, I cannot answer. Because if you have 
a piece of information that you think is worth your salt and your security operative. You have to take a decision because as the, the, the chief executive of my state, it's not everything that comes before me that I share with my wife. It's not everything that comes before me that I share with my ADC. But what you've just said is that as chief security officer of Abia State, you are not privy to some information that is integral in dealing with the crisis on your hands. Certainly, yes. So how do you intend to contend that with the federal government? Because the issue of IPOP cannot be resolved until you get the adequate you, you, information you not, needed. You, you are interrogating the, the, the security architecture of, of uh, our country as it is now. Because the, the commissioner doesn't take orders from me. The military doesn't take orders from me. You know, I, I couldn't have, uh, uh, the, if the military wanted to visit uh, uh, Kano's house or anybody's house in Abia State, they didn't tell me. I wasn't private to it. You know, the day they, they, they had a letter that they were coming for Operation Python Dance that was supposed to start on a Friday, but they decided to test their pieces of equipment by Sunday. And, uh, so there's no synergy between the state government and the military, the federal government? You know, I mean, there is synergy, but what level of synergy? That is what you ask. It seems like a it very is, poor is, level of synergy. Is, not, because is, you did come out to say that the military was redrawing its troops from the streets of Abia, sure, sure, and they came out the next day to sure, counter that statement. Sure. No, because if I didn't, if I, 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 I had some discussions with some military top brass, and we were discussing, and you know, people who were, were up there, who took me into confidence, were appreciating the moves we were making and the efforts we were making to make sure that we doused the tension. Because what was put out in the social media was far too uh, exaggerated than what the actual situation and circumstances were. Where is Enam Dikano right now? Well, I, 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 it's a question I can answer. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't even think it's a fair question to ask me. Because Nigerians are asking, so his brother came out the other day asking the chief of army staff, uh, Buratai, to bring his dead body because he's been killed, allegedly. Has Buratai responded? He hasn't responded. So we know you're closest to the situation, you're closest to the grassroots, so we're wondering, do you know the whereabouts of Inam Dikano? I wish I knew. I, I, I don't you know honestly. Okay. Simple question. Are the Igbos marginalized? I, oh. I, I thought you would have asked me, do we have instances of marginalization in Nigeria? Yes. People are marginalized. Are the Igbos marginalized? Um, well, I don't think the Igbos are getting... Um, you know, a fair deal in this country, you know, but how to go about it is an entirely different thing because come to talk about it, there are no, there is no other ethnic group in this country, post-war experience that believes in one Nigeria than the Igbos. But do you believe restructuring is the solution to this claim of marginalization? Discussion, conversation, engagement is the solution. Part of what needs to be on the table for discussion is restructuring. What does restructuring mean? Restructuring for me means creating a platform where KB, can begin to be the, can continue to be the forerunners in rice production in Nigeria. And the mainstay of KB economy will be hinged on rice production. And KB will be able to feed other parts of Nigeria with their KB rice. Make enough money to pay their bills and return something to a weak center. That is my idea of restructuring. So can be said for every state in this country. It will do so many things. One is that we we'll begin to reward hard work, pound for pound. 
there will no longer be a situation where monkey the chop. Baboon. Baboon the whack. <laughs> Your Excellency, <laughs> any final words to our viewers? Well, I, I, I strongly believe that um, we are stronger as one country. I strongly believe that um, we can all create opportunities that can accommodate the less privileged than those that are most vulnerable in the society. I strongly believe that in this country, um, as Africans, as Nigerians, we have so much love in our hearts to share to everybody. And um, uh, if we remember where we're coming from, if we see the future that God has prepared for us, we'll be happier living together. Your Excellency, thank you so much Welcome. for your words of wisdom Welcome. and your time Welcome. as usual. Thank you. That's it for today's program. To watch extended clips from this interview, you can visit our website www.tostvnetwork.com. Don't forget for news and sustainable development across Africa and current affairs news, also visit our website and to read my opinion articles, you can see my personal website, osasuigvinadion.com. Follow us on social media at TOSTV Network at The Osasu Show, at Osasu Ignatian, on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. I'll see you same time, same place next week, and until then, take very good care of yourself. God bless you.